Many people give Michael Moore credit, and I think rightfully so, because back in 2016, he was one of the few people to predict Donald Trump's victory. Now, I watched the show he was on. He was on Bill Maher's program, and he said, uh, you know, I think Donald Trump is going to win. Now, when he said that, I didn't actually think he was being serious. I thought that he was just saying that as a way to try to motivate people to get out and support Hillary Clinton to make people think that her win wasn't inevitable. So, you know, I didn't necessarily believe him. And I was one of the individuals who thought, I mean, it's Hillary Clinton, but there's no way she's going to lose to a reality television show star like it's going to be close but she's probably going to pull it off but he ended up being right he was proving right so he gets that cloud um and he is once again sounding the alarm letting people know trump may pull off another 2016 joe biden's victory is not a foregone conclusion and at this point it's looking less and less likely so on Facebook, Michael Moore shared a poll of Biden and Donald Trump in battleground states, which shows Joe Biden currently only has a one point lead over Donald Trump on average. Now, he followed this up with a Facebook post saying, sorry to have to provide the reality check again. But when CNN polled registered voters in August in just the swing states, Biden and Trump were in a virtual tie in Minnesota. It's 47 47 in Michigan, where Biden had a big lead. Trump has closed the gap to four points. Are you ready for a Trump victory? Are you mentally prepared to be outsmarted by Trump again? Do you find comfort in your certainty that there is no way Trump can win? Are you content with the trust you've placed in the DNC to pull this off? The Biden campaign just announced he'll be visiting a number of states, but not Michigan. Sound familiar? I'm warning you almost 10 weeks in advance, the enthusiasm level for the 60 million in Trump's base is off the charts. For Joe, not so much. Don't leave it to the Democrats to get rid of Trump. You have to get rid of Trump. We have to wake up every day for the next 67 days and make sure each of us are going to get 100 people out to vote. Act now. So with the way that he words this, you know, it leads me to believe that my assumption about his prediction in 2016 is correct. Like he's saying this to motivate people. But do I think that he actually sees the writing on the wall, thinks that Democrats could blow this? I do. So now I see this, obviously, since it's really explicit as a type of motivator to get people to get active, to get out and vote. But I also see him as uh, trying to sound the alarm and let people know Trump could win. Now, Again, this is still, you know, not a foregone conclusion. Like, I feel as if it's a 50-50. Like, I don't think any one conclusion at this point in time is a guarantee. I think, like, maybe the debates are going to have an impact in some way. I don't know. But what I do know is that I feel less and less certain about Biden's victory as time goes on. The more Biden speaks, the more it seems like his numbers drop. But more important than that even is the fact that Donald Trump is seemingly getting a hold of the narrative. He's blaming Joe Biden for the protests and the riots when Joe Biden doesn't even have power yet. The fact that he's able to do that shows you how effective the right-wing media machine is at manipulating and brainwashing people. Like, I don't like Joe Biden, but is he responsible for the protests? No, of course not. Now, on top of that... As COVID numbers decrease, this is good for Donald Trump because he gets rewarded for it regardless if he deserves that or not. Like, COVID is still a really, really horrible phenomenon that's taking place. But so long as the numbers are decreasing even a little bit, Trump is going to brag. Trump is going to make sure people know he's responsible. It's because of things that he did. He was the one who took action. It's not just happening on its own. He did it. It's not the governors. It's Trump. He's really good at bragging. So we don't know. Trump could still get tripped up by hyper-focusing on socialism and calling Joe Biden the far left. I think that the more he does this, the more he loses people because nobody believes that Joe Biden is far left. Unless you're a Trump supporter, then you're just from that perspective. Maybe you're too far gone anyway. But this isn't going to persuade anyone. But the key issue here is voter apathy. I think this will be the ultimate decider. Like, Trump can tweak his campaign strategy a little bit, but at the end of the day, I think this was always going to come down to enthusiasm. Democrats are going to lose unless they get out enough people to vote. And that means they have to give people a reason. They have to excite people. Have they done that? Not at all. They haven't even tried. You can say, oh, well, you know, he did these task forces with Bernie, so, I mean, are you not happy? 
ask yourself this. What has he done to promote the findings of the task forces? Does anyone feel like this was more than just window dressing? I mean, if you honestly think it's going to be conducive to any policy outcomes that, you know, aren't already like going to be what he promotes, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Joe Biden isn't doing anything to win over voters. Like I've said, he has to pick a single policy and just talk about it endlessly. Medicare for all, pot legalization. But I've even been more kind than that and said, if he just takes one of his existing policies, sorry, just hit the microphone. If he takes one of his existing policies and he just like boasts about it nonstop, $15 minimum wage, that's a winning ticket. Like if you tell people, vote for me and you're going to get a raise, that would be so influential. People who aren't excited about Joe Biden might be motivated to come out and vote because a $15 minimum wage, that would be a lifesaver, a game changer to people. So even all of the supposedly progressive elements of Biden's platform, why aren't we hearing about them? Like the same thing was said back in 2016. Hillary Clinton has the most progressive platform of any Democratic nominee. Okay, well, people don't believe her, but even if that's the case, why isn't she talking about it more? So here's the thing. It's not too late for Joe Biden and Democrats to turn this around. It's not too late. But if you think that enough people doing grassroots activism on behalf of Joe Biden is going to be, you know, the, the thing that actually tips this in Biden's favor, I'm not that optimistic. It would help, sure. But I mean, Trump is already out canvassing Joe Biden. A couple of weeks back, I read a political story where they talk about how in one week, Trump's team knocked on a million doors, whereas Biden's team knocked on zero. There's already that enthusiasm there, which translates to grassroots momentum. People are canvassing and actively promoting Donald Trump. You're not just going to snap your fingers and get that because people are afraid that Trump is going to win again. Like Biden has to do something to motivate the people to want to motivate others. Like he's going to be the spark. He's the catalyst here. And we have to acknowledge that. But I mean, again, it's not too late to turn it around. Like it doesn't have to be another 2016. Trump can still be ousted. We all want that to happen. But it's not going to happen if Joe Biden sits on his ass. Like, I get that I've said, seemingly contradictory so, admittedly, that he has to hide in his basement because he keeps making gaffes. But here's the thing. You can have your team put on an ad that just says, if you vote for me, you get a raise. Every American gets a raise. $15 an hour, minimum wage. That's going to be my first legislative priority. I mean, the difference that that would make without actually endorsing any new policy would be substantial. Like, you have to tell people, I'm going to give you something if you vote for me. A tangible difference will be noticed if I'm president in your life. Your wallet will be fatter. Vote for me. I mean, Kamala Harris endorsed a $2,000 per month UBI for the duration of this pandemic. Like, is he promoting that? Is she promoting that? I mean, they just think that this victory is a given. And I see the same hubris that I saw back in 2016, except I bought into the hubris. I believed them when they were confident. This time, not so much. I don't believe that the Democrat is going to win because Trump is a clown. No, this is about what you're going to do for people. And it doesn't matter how clownish the Republican is. If people don't feel as if they have a good enough reason to come out and vote for you, if they don't know what your policies are, they're going to stay home. And if they stay home, you lose. You know... You know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.